This is Culture Communication and Brand Moments with Shelby Joe Long, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Culture Communication and Brand Moments is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Shelby Jo Long. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Genius Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Shelby Jo Long, your host, and I love hosting interviews just because I get to know people a little bit more, but mostly I want to inspire you to think about your genius in a different way that you can transition your genius into a new marketplace. You can create a business out of your passion. And I love to interview people that have done that and have such a great experience that they bring it to other areas, other industries, and it's just amazing. Today, I am honored to host in this interview, Dr. Kameen Samuel. I'll give you a little bit of her background, but I'll have her get into all of the, all of the specifics. We met at a speaking event in in Huntington Beach not long ago, and we've had the opportunity to interact, and I look forward to learning more about what she does. But amongst her many accolades, she is the first African-American female helicopter pilot in the Navy. And that's a pretty amazing piece, barrier breaker. She has been through all of these things, and it's just amazing to hear her story. So, Kameen, welcome to the podcast today. I'm excited to have you here. Well, thank you so much, Shelby. I'm I'm so honored to be here. It's really um, exciting to get to spend this time with you. Oh, agreed. I'm just thrilled to get to know you a little bit more. I mean, we know we know the helicopter pilot piece. At least tell us, maybe tell us a little bit more about what you do. So that's the former. What do you do now? What's your business now? So now I'm a business coach and I have clients all over the world. I love working with uh, most of my clients are coaches. So I help a lot of coaches learn how to thrive. I have a book on on just working with coaches and making money. It's called Wealth Creation for Coaches. Um, and so the I also have executives and really helping people around mindset and how to shift their mindset into what they'd like to create more of, whether again, they're executives or coaches or business owners, how to think about who they're becoming and how to think about money differently. All very challenging pieces, especially when you're stepping into the consulting industry and then you're moving from working in the one-on-one space to the one-to-many space and you're getting into higher ticket offers. So all of those things are so important and and challenging for entrepreneurs. Extremely. And, and many entrepreneurs think that, oh, they shouldn't have trouble thinking about money or they shouldn't have issues charging people uh, but when we're working for someone else, someone else sets the rate, we just take what we get, you know, we might still be getting promoted. But when you go to work for yourself, that's a different game altogether. And the inner part really is a, is something that we get to work with uh, as we become entrepreneurs. And I would imagine, and I, wa- I want to ask a little bit about your background and how you made that transition, because... I would imagine coming from the military and being in that structure that that transitions are very challenging. And I'm sure you learned a lot of lessons in that entrepreneurial transition. <laughs> that but transition I, was a mess. <laughs> <I'll just say. laughs> and you learn so many lessons that can help everybody else. So I'm, I imagine I, I really want to get into that. But let's talk a little bit before we get to the entrepreneurial switch. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your the Navy days and t- talk about that whole influence because I think that that's probably a dramatic influence on what you do today. Well, it it is and it isn't. And it's it is because what I I I didn't want to necessarily be a Navy pilot, right? That, it was something that I I like to say it was an adult decision. It was second semester senior year. Uh, that I made that decision. I had wanted to be actually in business or I wanted to be a doctor. Actually, I went to college as pre-med and that didn't go very well. Then it was business. And and so it was um, my path of really trying different things. And I loved being in the Navy. I really loved it. I excelled at it. And 
it taught me a lot about leadership and leading people, but it did not prepare me for being an entrepreneur because you're, if you can think about the structure is really around taking orders, right? And somebody else makes the orders and then you have to go and kind of live into it. And, um, and so what I was kind of joking about early, not really, but when I left the military, I went into business for myself, failed epically, and then had to really learning think. Experience, learning experience. <laughs> learning experience. And, and, when I, and when I say failing, failed epically, I really have learned. That's not, I don't take that personally. In the beginning, I took it personally. For decades, I took it personally. And uh, now you, I realize we can't actually um, thrive without some failure. Uh, and, and, and those lessons are so critical. Uh, and, and I have learned them and I continue to learn them. And, and uh, one of the things I had to learn at that time was really the business I chose was not in alignment with who I was. Yeah. So when I got clearer, then I went into corporate and I grew my corporate career from kind of an entry level web developer up through executive and then went into coaching uh, full time about a little over eleven years ago. Nice. So it wasn't it. It wasn't immediately laid out for you. you had there's some trial and error in there, and I think lots of trial and error and I, and winning, I, right? And, yeah, right. And you have to be. I think that's something. At least we work in a very similar space. I work with coaches to help develop their their signature program so they can have legacy and levity in the marketplace. And, and often I think people aren't prepared for that failure and it's not necessarily failure, but it's, it's, you know, not everything's going to be perfect when you introduce your idea into the marketplace or when you step into business, because it's a different transition for sure. Absolutely. And, and that alignment piece, right? And, and that testing of different things, like, what do I love to do keeping? What is my zone of genius? What is the thing that I was meant for? What are, what are some of the seeds that have come along the way that say, oh, I would love to do this, and I could make a living at that? Or I could try that and test that. And so a lot of the, you know, I, I'm very big advocate of kind of looking at it from a lab perspective of testing and being a scientist in our own life. Ooh, I love that. Being a scientist in your own life. You got to test things, yes. which probably comes from your medical background and then being in the military. <laughs> so yeah, you got to test things out and see, see what works and finding your genius. I talk all about yes. that. Too. At what, at what point did you, did you kind of think, all right, I want to, I want to get my ideas into the marketplace. I want to start a business. Like what was, what was that process like? Or was there a light bulb or was it something that just kind of, do you have influences that brought you to that space or what was that like? Such a great question because it, I think the, the path for each entrepreneur and each business owner is very, can be very different. I had, I had wanted I, to, Oh, I was always wanting to help people solve their problems. Even as a like elementary school, I was always trying to help people. And so the path then to get there again, there's the epic, epic failure that said, I didn't know that a, a principle, I think you and I are both familiar with this, the vision for your life, we want to hold steady or the vision for what we're creating. We want to hold steady the strategy it usually takes three to five different ways to, to try something to actually get it right. Sure. And so uh, I didn't know that. So I thought, oh, I, I can't be in business. I can't do it because of, of the challenges that I had. And the, the passion that I had for helping people was always there, whether no matter where I was. I was a flight instructor. I was in corporate, a manager of people and leader. And so people would find me to at, you know, ask for, you know, assistance and uh, through their life challenges. And, and so as I did that, and got a couple of degrees around, um, I have one in uh, spiritual psychology and master's in spiritual psychology and master's actually in spiritual science. And, and so those things kind of taught me this idea of really how do you look at life differently? And how do you start to come from your genius, come from your heart and be in alignment with that? And then as my 
I grew my corporate career, that tap, I like to say that tap of like being in business for myself never went away. I always wanted to own my own business and really help people thrive. Sure. That's the key to working with coaches because that's what coaches want to do. So that's a, it seems like a seamless path, but that's, that's a, it's a challenging way to figure out whether that's the right vehicle. So. Yes. And it's also how to, how to, so how to make money from it. Right. And so I love working with coaches because they are all about helping others. My part of my zone of genius, one of my great, you know, um, corporate jobs was I got to be online merchandising first as a, a manager of online merchandising and then as a vice president. And I'm just wired to help you know, like figure out how people can make money with their genius. And then, uh, and then specifically coaches, how to think and grow their coaching practices so that they can thrive and help others make money. I will help others with their, the type of work they do, but I'm really focused on helping them really be able to make a living doing what they love. Absolutely. Creating a life out of your passion. That's what we, your passion and what is intuitive to you. And it's, it's something that seems, you know, I, I love that you talked about kind of this spirituality component too, yet you're like a dis- data decision maker, the, the t- trial and error type of thing. But there's really a combination of the two things. But again, we work in a very similar space, helping people leverage their expertise to be able to create the pa- the business out of their passion and get past those mental blocks that that takes. But that's, uh, there is a combination of the, the intuition that you can't really define. And then that the data, you've got to combine those together. So, yes. And it's really, I love the work that you do in helping them find their genius and helping them make a, make that business. And then what I'm working with them is usually they've found that thing. They just haven't figured out a way to leverage it financially. And then going in and kind of looking at the beliefs, where did they come from? Where, who, whose voice is inside of them um, that said that they couldn't do something or they were capped at a certain level of making money and being able to kind of go in and I like to think surgically remove those beliefs uh, through, uh, because I'm also a a clinical hypnotherapist uh, and and all the tools and techniques to try to reframe and rewire those beliefs. And you're an expert in that area being, being the barrier breaker that you were in the Navy with the, with being a female helicopter pilot for sure. Yes. And I have, I've had insight. Do you see some similarities in those two things? Well, yes, <laughs> because I, I, you know, being a, a Navy pilot, I had to just get out of my own way. It wasn't a natural thing for me to do. And so I had to really learn how to stay focused and stay focused on what I could control in the moment and not get too far ahead of myself because I just scare myself. Uh, you know, if I really thought about what I was doing and and go beyond that next step. And so it's the same with, I'm sure with the work that you do is, is really helping people stay in the present and create from the present moment. Sure. Such a key lesson. It's very, and, and I imagine your mindset, the mindset work, like you've got a, it's a grounding moment almost, you know? Yes. And I was working with a client earlier today who was writing a book and she was saying, I, you know, I got overwhelmed yesterday and I said, okay, overwhelm is out in the future. It's not in the present moment. And so working with people to get so specific on their present moment, so narrow that it's just literally one step at a time that, and that's a lot of the work that I'm working with people on. And, and when we created the cover of, of, oops, you can't see my book. It's behind me. There's steps. Um, but it's this step by step approach of really getting people to see it doesn't the momentum and the, the speed at which you can do something is, is, is unbelievable. Sometimes it's magical, but it is that step by step, step approach, no matter what you're creating. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, and and I, I'll be sure to include your site and all that so we can find yeah. your book because that's uh gives you give, give you give all the tools for that. Yes. But then yes. it's and- which why your work is so important that you have the tools, but then you have somebody there to help you mm-hmm. implement those tools and the accountability piece and the all of those pieces that are so important. Yes. And, and the Wealth Creation for Coaches book, and, and I'm not necessarily advocating people to buy it, although it's a great book, um, it is, is, <laughs> is, a, is not just for coaches. Uh, the entrepreneurs who have read it also find it super helpful because it's a workbook. It really is, is, you know, whether you work with me or work with you, work with someone, it's really there's some entry level steps about what are you thinking? What is your mindset? First, what would you like to create? How do you design a life around um, your business so that you can live into it and fulfill that and then take the steps to allow it to grow? Sure. In your in your work, I'm curious if you've come across with your clients, have you come across a common barrier or common challenge in the mindset? Or is, does it tend to, can you put that in a group? I mean, I know it's individual mm-hmm. for every person, whether it's the limiting beliefs of their industry or limiting beliefs that from their parents, you know, so is there something that's common? It's the, the limiting beliefs around money is probably the most, most common that I work with. Then there are always offshoots of that, but the the limiting beliefs around um, I have to work hard for money. Uh, Money doesn't grow on trees. So some of it is what they heard too, right? You can't be happy and have money, right? Money leads to all sorts of distractions and destruction in somebody's life. And a lot of these things we hear as children, and we don't know that we actually pick those beliefs up. But then when we we go to create something on our own, that's when they get unearthed, right? Sure. And especially when as entrepreneurs, that's when it starts to pop up and we start to remember oh, well, I have to work hard for money. I have to work hard, uh, so hard to make a living that you have to have money to make money. And and all of the things that they were taught, including I can't be happy and have money. And, uh, or I can't have love and have money. And right. so the ability to help uh, under see have people see underneath some of those is... You know, some of the work that at the core is, am I enough? Am I enough to be successful? Am I enough for some, well, somebody won't pay me that kind of money that I can thrive, right? And there's, and they can't see the path of how to make the kind of money that they want to make. So that really is, is helping them see that one, they pick that voice up, that belief up outside of them. And we question, is it really true that they can't make money doing what they love and, and really starting to rewire it and having them have a vision. And again, that stair-step approach so that they're not trying to leap from a negative belief to a, a, a super positive belief, but an incremental step along the way. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, and I think... I think we, our mindset tells us we get overwhelmed when we have to think about all the things that we have to do. And then, but then we just got to take it one step at a time, the incremental approach, if you will. Yes. So much of that resonates with, with, you know, my living my own battles as stepping into entrepreneurship. You know, the, the subtitle of my book is the journey of an academic refugee, right? So I created a career inside academia that I loved because I love teaching, but it was limiting and I didn't understand how limiting it was until I stepped outside of it and started to do it on the outside. And then, then I'm like, oh, I can make more money for my ideas and I can do all these different things. And there's all these possibilities. And, and it's something I think we get in with our industry and where we're at and family and all these things that we just don't, we don't discover that until we step outside of that and get a little bit uncomfortable. So, yes, absolutely. And, and, and it's okay to be uncomfortable. We, you know, and people will say, "Oh, I'm so afraid," and I'm like, "No, it's unfamiliar." Mm-hmm. What we want to do is figure out how to make it inside of us from a neuroscience perspective. Our minds do not like things that are unfamiliar. 
our minds run away from things that are unfamiliar. It becomes scary, the boogeyman in the closet. And what we want to do is make it more familiar for us to actually thrive. And that's where that stair-stepping approach comes in. That's where kind of keeping models in front of us of people who have been successful and really living as you the work you do is living our zone of genius where we're in flow now we add a price tag to that to our genius and and just know that that's just going to unearth beliefs yeah because once you they're unearthed that's fine we can we can transform it once we know it um, but anticipate it it's okay to anticipate we're going to have some beliefs show up that's all right <laughs> it's going to be a few challenges but we'll work past them yeah, I think that's that's a big piece of it too. Is that that understanding that it's a failure or a challenge that you figure out a way around it. You pivot and you you know I've learned that from yeah. my business partners for sure in the strategic advisor board that you that doesn't work. Oh, let's pivot and go another way and see what works. And you just have to be able to be a little bit malleable, right? That you can still keep your core genius. It's just might be delivered in a different way. So I love we have that word malleable, right? Because if people can understand and the work you're doing as well, Shelby, is this idea of if we can be flexible, we can hold the vision. I'm, my, the, my genius is what it is. I'm great at helping people with money and their money beliefs and helping them uh, create their business. Well, how I do that, as you just said, right? The how of it can change. The, mm -hmm. the vision of helping as many people as I want, that vision can hold. Then it becomes, do I write a book? Do I do a coaching? Do I go into business? Do I whatever? And I have, you know, clients who have studios and, and we're, and again, it's pivoting or expanding their mindset to include different ways to be of service. Yeah. And there, you know, there's a wonderful book and the title, I love the title because it says it pretty much all, which is experiments never fail. And so if we can really, and I have a, a program I, I run, which is called the Money Lab. And it's like this ability for us to test and test and test and not take it personally if something doesn't work. It's like, oh, a scientist is like, oh, test number 1033. Um, these were the results, this is whatever, use it as a data point, not as a personal failure, not as something that is, uh, is an affront to, to them personally, that they're broken in some way. Does right. that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's not, yeah, taking it personally too. I mean, <laughs> fundamentally, it's like... <laughs> You can't control, and, and it's the, and I think part of that too is the not being able to be in control of every single thing, right? Yeah. Like we, we cannot control the worldwide market. We yeah. can't. We can see the trends, but we can't, you know, it, COVID, I think that's what surprised, I mean, it surprised a lot of businesses and a lot of people. And it was a real challenge for those businesses that survived it to be able to to be malleable, to like shift what they do and to be able to, you know, to, I think it surprised a lot of people, especially like the brick and mortar businesses. And how do I, how do I survive as I a restaurant? That. How do I survive as a coffee shop? And like, oh, I just have to change my delivery system and then I can keep doing these things. And I mean, there's, I think that's a uh, scary when we have that challenge and then trying to find a way around it after everything's been so, I guess, sustainable. So. Yes, and, and I I think there's an opportunity for um, people, especially entrepreneurs, to look at things from I have I like to say I have a blessing orientation and a testing orientation to life. So when COVID happened, I stopped all of my comp my my clients and said, "Look, okay, we're gonna we're gonna need to pivot." And this was in that March of 2020. Mm -hmm. I had professors who had never done classes online. I had um, I had one brick and mortar. Uh, a client who had resisted me for years. She has a Pilates studio. She's just wonderful and, and had resisted me for years on moving to at the time Skype. And then she had in the last year and a half prior or two years prior to COVID. So she was back up and running in no time. 
Yeah. Right. And so it's, it's this ability for us to start to look as when I asked them, like, what's the blessing here? Not that, not all the horrible things that happened because of the pandemic. Right. But what's the blessing? Well, I get to think about my business differently. So each person, each entrepreneur, in if you're in corporate, what, whoever is listening, if you're, if we're thinking about things as, oh, how was this here to help me? How is this here in service to me that helps us to be that malleable person and leader with for ourselves, self-leader if we're just working for ourselves or a company that says, oh, we can pivot. Um, there is another way because I, I really do hold this as, as, as I've held every period of time is the most innovative, inspirational, creative time possible if we have that as a mindset. Absolutely. But that's hard to do. And that's why we need somebody like you to bring us through those tough times to change our mindset a little bit. Well, Kameen, what do you have coming up in your business? What's next for you? Well, I have a few things. So right now I'm really, I'm really focused on helping coaches thrive and helping them make the money because there's this somewhat of an industry belief that, you know, there are a lot of coaches don't thrive. So a lot of the work around wealth creation for coaches and really helping them think about um, the possibility of creating wealth for themselves. And wealth for me is all areas, it's health, it's relationships, and of course, it's money. Um, and it's, it doesn't mean that it's all the same number when it comes to money. Right. Sure. It's what is what is it? What is thriving look like for one coach might be completely different for another and helping them design that. Um, and I have another project that I'm going to be working on, which is really about helping taking this same work to other um, things around generational poverty to really help with that mindset that we are not permanently pervasively poor or permanently pervasively broken and and I know what it, for myself having gone through financial trouble um, many years ago and had to pivot from that and had to rebuild myself my self-esteem my belief my connectedness to my the things that I love to do my zones of genius and um, helping people understand that thriving is possible no matter no matter where you were born, where mm -hmm. what the color of your skin is, what industry you come from, that is possible to thrive. Absolutely. Is that is that book three that you're working on? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's uh, it is the follow up to the wealth creation because it's really the system of it's the, this would be number six overall um six. it is I have this, my number on. <laughs> that's okay um, because there's so many uh but the the kind of coming taking the wealth creation for coaches into a system for people that that really that whether they're an entrepreneur or a leader or they were born into the poorest circumstances that there there is a mindset and a, a path for everyone to to thrive. Absolutely. Gosh, I love that. Where can, if our audience wants to find out more about what you offer and your books and all that, where can we find you? You can find me at kameensamuel.com and uh, there's everything there. There are videos. I have a lot of videos on YouTube around, um, there's spiritual aspects around money. There's also the wealth creation for coaches. I, I'm really blessed to have written this book with Steve Chandler, who we call the, the godfather of coaching. Uh, and uh, so there's a lot of resources that I have on my website that are really designed for anyone to thrive differently with their money beliefs. That's awesome. Gosh, there's so much synergy in what we do. I just love it. And I love that it's, it's, all this, everything that you've done. And now what's your, the next step with the teaching the systems that all of those things are so critical for every business owner to discover and to be able to have the mindset to do that. So, yes, 
I'm yeah. really, because we need everyone's creativity. The work you do with helping people with their zones of genius and, and really living from genius, we need everyone for this planet to thrive. And, and everyone has a, a part and we are, we are separate and we are one. And so the ability for us to, to work together, work in harmony and really move into this age of creativity and innovation, it's, we need, like everybody has a place. Oh, I love all those things. Uh, one final question. What would you say to that listener out there that's thinking about starting a business, thinking about maybe stepping into entrepreneurship? What would you, what would be your piece of advice to them for before they take the step or to encourage them to take the step? Well, we I think more creativity. we need, more creativity. <laughs> we, need yeah. more, we, we need everyone. And I think that um, most people don't take that jump because they, of, of what they heard about their abilities. I'm not smart enough. Nobody in my family has been an entrepreneur or your uncle failed 700 times or, you know, you know, you're not whatever. And, and if you have a dream and, and it, it doesn't matter what it is, it's like, it could be a craft. We need craftspeople. We need um, teachers. We need professors. We need coaches. We need those in corporate Whatever it is, but if it's an entrepreneur, we really, it's this ability for you to think from what's your genius? What can you help somebody with? What is it that you know that can help somebody get to their next level in their life? Or what could you create if you're a great studio owner or a restaurateur, you have the best baking recipe on this planet, share it, uh, test it out come from as much of a testing mentality as possible that says, I'm just going to test this with, you know, this. And, oh, I sold out. Great. Now I'm going to raise the rate. Or I'm so busy. Now I'll raise my rates. And, uh, and think from that it's possible to create a life, a thriving life with whatever it is your, your genius is. And that somebody, there's a, a resonant match to your energy, that whatever you want to share with the world, that is, I, I in one of my books, the uh, Conscious Luck Workbook, um, we talk about uh, three three things that you can do to, to we call it luckify a goal. Is it meaningful to you? It does it light you up? And those two are so important. Whatever you want to create, make sure it lights you up. And then, does it benefit others? And if you can really live from that place, anything is possible. Don't take fail failure personally. Just go for it. Just go for it. A Just thing. go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Kareen, you live, a, you, your life has been all about service to your country and service to others and service to the profession and the grand, the grand conversation about innovation and creativity. And I think that is tremendous and i think it's a great conversation to have an influence for people that need to hear that don't be scared to get your ideas into the world don't be as scared to build a business because you can you just have to be able to move yes and and it's and shelby the work that you're doing in the world too and really helping people see their genius and own it and live from it so that they can they can share it with others is so important. So that synergy between the work that we do and how we see the creativity of everyone is really about lifting people into their passion, into um, sharing and being of service as well. Oh, that's awesome. I can't even ask for a better way to end the interview. <laughs> Because I I feel that you that's such so inspiring for our audience to hear that 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 you need to live in your zone of genius, be creative, and there are people out there that can help lift you into that zone of genius and take advantage of it while you can. Because absolutely, because we need that help. We need we need we need your zone of genius. We need it all. Well, yes. see, that was just awesome. What a fun interview. What. A, so much fun to get to know you and your business a little bit better and to let our audience know more about you and your business. I look forward to 
future interactions. And uh, I'm going to check out your books for sure. Again, lots of synergy between what we do. So there's a lot of lots of steps moving forward, I think. I'm so excited. And thank you so much for having me. I really uh, enjoy you and the work that you're doing in the world. And so it's just an honor to be here with you. Of course. And thank you for that. And I look forward to sharing the stage with you in the future. I I'd love that. I'm sure it's going to happen. Amazing speaker. I'm excited to check out all your speaker reels and all of that. So uh, it's just so much fun to know more about you. Me as well. Thank you. It's, it's just truly fun, so fun to be with you. Good. Well, I'm so glad you joined us on the podcast today. And to all you listeners out there, if you are inspired by this conversation, I invite you to subscribe to the channel so we can hear more conversations like this. But really, I don't know if there's much more inspiration than to harness what you have and get it into the marketplace and test it because there's always a place for it. If you can be malleable and bend and move and fit it, it will work. So thank you for that inspiration. And listeners, we'll see you next time when we talk to the next genius entrepreneur that has created a business out of the genius. Thanks for listening to Culture, Communication, and Brand Moments with your host, Shelby Jill Long. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we will see you on the next episode.